everybody, welcome to another video on the series on how to use ChatGPT on your own data. And in this session, I'm going to show you how we will use Langchain and Python to um, yeah, prompt our own data. Let's say you have a lot of data, you have PDFs, you have text files, maybe emails, basically a whole knowledge base of data. And we want to ask questions on that very own data so meaning basically chat and prompt with that data M most of you know how chat gpt works but that uh, will only work on data that was that it was trained on and many people have data by themselves they want to chat with um, and this is what we're not going to do in this session so we basically will put uh, a lot of data in one folder and then we will use Langchain, the Langchain library, to create an index out of that data in that folder. And then we will run ChatGPT from OpenAI on that very index. So let me just quickly show you what kind of data we have in this case. Give me a second. So here's the directory we'll be working on. I'm going to delete this one. All right, and this is the data folder. So this is what I copied in there. It's a big PDF. It's the uh, very popular and book on data mining by Witten, Frank and Hall, which I also use in lectures um, quite frequently. So this will be our ground data, but we could also copy other PDF, uh, TXT files, emails, whatever into that data folder and then we will have a script that we can start in the command line and it will create an index out of everything that is in that data folder and then we can prompt uh, the index and the script is created in a way that it will um, persist that very index so it will be created only once if the data does not change and we start it again, it will use that already saved index. But I'm going to show you that in a second. You will find all that stuff on GitHub as well. Uh, just go to github.com and I will post that link in the description and you have the script and you can just basically, um, yeah, copy the whole repository or clone it and start. Uh, one thing you need, you need an OpenAI API key. So if you don't have already an API key from OpenAI, you need to register and create your API key and then create a .env file just in this folder and copy your um, API key into that .env file, like API key equals and your key and that's it. Uh, because that script will search for this .env file um uh, with your key in it all right so maybe we can just start the script okay let me clear the old stuff out um it's pretty straightforward we will just start the langchain chat gpt folder python script and we can basically give it a prompt uh in the first run so let's just start it and see what it does so it will take some time now and there is some debug info I left on. You can deactivate that in the script. So we see that we will in we will initialize the whole thing with the GPT 3.5 turbo model. Um, you can also use chat GPT um, 4 if you want. The data is in a data folder. The persist is set to true, which means we will try to save the index. So make it persistent. And that would be the hash created for a data folder. So our script, if we start it again, will look in the data folder, create a hash. And if it's the same, use the old index. And as we can see, it is now creating the index. And this takes some time. It's a large book um, with a lot of pages. So if you have a lot of data, this might take really, really some time. So I'm going to pause. OK, there we go. The next step is will still take some time. But if we have created the index once and reuse it, then it will be just a matter of seconds. All right, it is now finished and I'm going to show you. We will now have a persist folder 
and this is where the index is stored and we can also see there is a hash that has been stored in this persist folder for the current data folder which we can compare later all right and the answer to our question that was what is data mining we get like data mining is the process of extracting potentially useful information from a data by using computer programs to search yada 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 okay though so that's a pretty good explanation what data mining is but we going to try uh, a little bit further and like the question which step in data mining does take the longest and requires the most time which is also a typical question i would ask in an exam I'd like to start the question and we get the answer according to kabina data preparation accounts for 60 percent of the effort involved in data mining applications and i can already say that this is quite true um, when we do some research projects, it is sometimes days, if not weeks, data mangling until we get a result. Okay, but let's check this out. Um, we get some real uh, citation like Kabina et al. I'm just going to copy that and search it in that very document and see if it's correct and not hallucinated. So we have two places. Okay, Kabina written people for oh no, that's something different. Check out the second estimate data by sixty percent effort. Okay, this is so it got everything correct. Quite impressive. No, even the numbers are correct. No had hallucinations. All right. Um, there is also this whole chat history is prompted to every uh, new question and prompt so you can also refer to all the questions you did so just like in, in chat gpt but i'm gonna do another one and really try to put it on the edge like what um role does entropy which uh, some of you might know from physics and replay in the training of decision trees because we use the concept of entropy when splitting the trees into branches so plays a crucial role in the training it is used to measure the impurity and disorder in the data set it's to determine the best entry to split the data set at each node yeah that's correct okay pretty good pretty good so if a student would answer that um I would say, well, that's that's not bad. All right, so looks pretty good, huh? Okay, I'm just gonna hit quit here to show you what happens if we do or run the script again. Like I said, um, it has a persistence function, so the um, index is stored, and we can now see it will be reusing the old index. And as we can see, the the question is asked pretty quickly now. So. If your data does not change, um, you can just store the index and run prompts every time you want. All right, so we can see, um, I think, just in a minute how useful that is. Um, I mean, for now it runs in a command line and yeah, that may be fine, but we could in future steps put that whole thing into a web application, even with the possibility to upload your own data and then prompt it. Uh, let's have a look at the script and what it does uh, or what's happening here. It's actually not that much, uh, to be honest. Um, like I said, you need a .env file. I will not open it so you don't see my API key. Um, and .env file where you store your API key and this is the main script. We need some libraries, mainly Langchain, uh, to create the index and the embeddings. Um, the .env package to load the environment file and the hashlib to create the hash for the data directory. Uh, I made this little function to create a, a hash um, for the directory, meaning that I will just basically uh, measure the whole file size of all files in the directory and I think the, the names of the files and that's it. This is what the hash will be and then i created a class uh, so we can create a object called langchains maybe not the best name 
and you can initialize uh, this class uh, with a model default is gpt 3.5 uh, default data here is data and default persistence here is persist and then we will run some pre-processing uh, and we have another uh, method called do prompt which will do the actual prompt then and in the pre-process um, which is <laughs> more or less the main thing in the whole class this is all uh, about making the index persistent checking the data folder uh, if hashes have changed or not and then so this is all what happens here we will check do we want to have it persist like initializing it with persist true or not if so check the data um, folder do we have a hash already if not we will create a new index um, is the hash there but it's different then we will also create a new index and this is what happens here um, all right, and then the main function is do prompt, uh, where we will prompt the index using uh, the ChatGPT 3.5 model. So this is here stored in self dot model. Um, like I said, you could also use like I don't know the uh, or cap, uh, pass another model uh, as a parameter in the instantiation of the object later if you want, like the ChatGPT 4 model. Uh, where were we here? and um, and then we will try to retrieve the index and then we can give it a history a chat history if present and of course a query and then this uh, function method will return the result uh, from the prompt this is the function so and what's happening in the main part is uh, yeah we can turn on and off logging if we want so this was this debugging infos which are sometimes quite useful to see what um, index or hash has been created, but you can basically also turn this off. Then an empty chat history as an array, and then we create the object, langchain, we instantiate it with default values like persistence, yes, ChatGPT 3.5, um, we inst uh, create the query empty and check if we get a um, command line parameter like okay let's let me quit this and like this you know do we get a command line parameter um, on startup an argument and we will uh, store this as the query and then just basically go into a infinite loop and check when we don't have a query then ask for one um, if the query is quit or queue then we will uh, exit the whole thing and if not basically uh, yeah do uh, a prompt on our uh, index data with the chat history and the query um, and print out the result and then add the answer we got to the chat history and that's it all right this is the whole script so feel free to um, enhance it uh, um, make all the funny things with it create your own diary every day uh, where you chat with your uh, diary and anything uh, all thing you have to do would be to basically put everything again in the data directory <laughs> after you uh, um, prompted it so it w of course you would have to cre recreate the index every day um, or create a web application using i don't know fast api or whatever like i said everything is on github um, so feel free to clone it, download it, change it. And yeah, now's the time to have fun with working uh, with AI, ChatGPT, OpenAI on your own data using LineChain.